And welcome to the show. Patriots Lament right here on KFAR is brought to you in part by Far North Tactical over there at the corner of 8th and Lacey, where you can get yourself all geared up for the coming apocalypse. <laughs> Actually, seriously, it's a place where you can get, uh, uh, you like that? <laughs> you can, you can uh, if you're going to say something, you need to actually say it into the microphone there, Dave. Uh, uh, actually, over there at Far North Tactical, you can get everything you need from firearms to uh, body armor to uh, items to basically, the, the whole point of it is to secure your own person and your own home. Uh, the, it's, a, it's just like the Gadsden flag, don't tread on me. Uh, nobody's trying to start a war, but if you bring it to my doorstep, I'm going to finish it. That's kind of what it's about right there. Far North Tactical, check it out for yourself at the corner of 8th and Lacey. And joining us in the studio this morning, we've got uh, Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises. Good morning, Josh. Good morning, Steve. And we've got Dave, Dave Giesel from the uh, Campaign for Liberty. Yes. I'm gonna, you're going to have to get a T-shirt with that printed on it and wear it every week because it just flies right out of my head. Yeah, or yeah. we could cut a commercial for you and play it three or four times. Throw it on the show. Where, uh, is, uh, where is Far North Tactical, man? What, you mean uh, Aaron Bennett? Yeah. I, he, I got a text from him saying that he was going to be here, but the last text I got was a couple of days ago. So You're I mean, late, Aaron. He might, on. Maybe he's been reading the news and realizes the apocalypse is already. The apocalypse. Yeah, apocalypse. Yeah, stock apocalypse. It's, it's not the coming apocalypse. It's the stock apocalypse. If you, if you <laughs> know what why, happened. Uh, I know why he's late. He forgot he was coming to the show. He thought he was going to work. Uh, that, that could be it. Yeah, I'm not sure entirely, but yeah. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, uh, a lot of stuff we can talk about this morning. I, I, I've given you literally, what, a ream of paper uh, from uh, all the different stories that have happened in the last week alone. Uh, where do you want to start? You want to start with the the, the, the the crash of the stock market on Thursday? You want to talk about the debt crisis that we averted? Oh, wait a second. Um, what happened? I thought it was pretty sweet. Uh, David was on Mr. Duke's show last Wednesday, I believe. Yeah. And... Uh, talking about real money versus fiat money and a guy called in and said well if you invested in the stock market back in aught 74 you'd be like totally rich right now and he was uh talking about the difference between the stock market's good because it just makes all this good money and gold is stupid and the very next day the stock market lost 1.2 trillion dollars worth of wealth it was pretty phenomenal the casino i think he uh was proved wrong by actual reality, and Dave was proved right. Uh, you know, it did. It is one of those things, though, where you see, for instance, we were saying that we were going to lose our our credit rating too, regardless of what happened to stocks. Or Only or if we didn't else. raise the debt. No, no, no. I, Only yeah, if we didn't raise the debt ceiling. Like Dave, I've been saying that we were going to lose our credit rating. I've been saying that for yeah. months because of uh, the fact that we are like, uh, well, crack addicts. To be quite honest, we're out there just trying to get the next fixed. Just that crack addicts don't steal. Generally, I mean, usually they're. I mean, sometimes they do. But <laughs> usually they're spending their own money. <laughs> my 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 point was though that that we are going to lose the credit rating because we are a bad risk. Yeah. And and gee, uh, that's exactly what S and P said yesterday. They, yeah. they said the reason why we lost the credit rating is because we're a bad risk. We are we 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 have now our our debt is greater than our GDP. That's kind of them to wait till the market closed last night before they. They, down, they downgraded, yeah. Because yeah. the yeah. same thing when they closed the gold window. Hmm. The gold window was closed on like a Sunday evening or something like that. Or, Yeah, they always do their, their bad news on either like a Friday evening or um, over the weekend. They never do it during the week. You know, we uh, what was it, the very next day after they raised the debt limit that we went ahead and increased our amount of debt all the way up to the new limit or within like 30% of the new limit? <laughs> I, it's just like, again, just like what we were saying before, that it, it, if somebody who's in debt goes out and gets another credit card to try to get themselves out of debt, all they're going to end up doing is jacking up that to its new limit, and we're right back where we were. I think you should say that again just to clarify what you just said. We've already spent that money. We have already spent that money. We have spent that money. We have gone into debt for more money than we could possibly ever pay back. And we raised it $2.3 trillion. I trillion, uh huh. And we went ahead and jacked up all of that. What was it? Another $2.1 trillion in one day. The biggest amount of spending in one yeah, well, day. Well, they, won, they won the lottery, you know? Is that what that was? <laughs> yeah, the debt, the debt ceiling lottery. If I had 2.3 trillion, I'd take at least three days to spend it. <laughs> you know what? I, even if, hour. <laughs> yeah, I know. even at my most grotesque spending ever in my entire life, I don't think I could possibly spend that much money in a year. 
I mean, even if I was absolutely ridiculous and uh, I took everybody I knew. $2,300 million? <laughs> <laughs> it would take you that long to spend that? I think it would take me at least a year to spend that. <laughs> What's, okay, I don't know what your yearly income is, Dave, but it is, uh, mine, is, uh, mine is far less than that. Well, in Zimbabwe dollars, I think about that much. <laughs> well, the American saving, dollar, yeah, the American dollar is going to be like that anyway. That yeah. You'd have a pretty sweet uh, day at the Far North Tactical. You know what? If if he allowed me to buy it with those that, that, that imaginary money, sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, here's the thing. We've you, being proven right when something really really bad happens is not a happy thing. You know, hey, look, I was right. The the the, the terrorists blew up the towers. I was trying to warn you. I mean, this is like what happened with the FBI mm. back right after the terror attacks. People have been sounding the alarm that our country was due for an economic crash. And it has begun. The iceberg has struck the Titanic. And, uh, you know, what, brothers, I don't think we got enough life rafts. Well, you look at Ron Paul, the last uh, presidential election, they were scoffing at him because he said exactly what's happening right now was going to happen. And he's just a loony, a whack, what a dork. Look at that old man. Mm-hmm. And he's right. Everything he said, he's right. And now we're, we're in phase two. We're having another presidential election. And all the, especially the conservative pundits, yeah, look at the whack. He's a nut job. What a crazy. He follows the Constitution. <laughs> That's such an outdated old dusty document. If, if he was right last time, maybe he's going to be right. Maybe he still is. You know, we we need to have a we need to go online and have a Facebook meeting to to come up with a new constitution. That's what a new a super congress. Uh, hey, that's what uh, that's oh god. Thanks for bringing better. that yeah, up. It's been that has been a good week. In in, in addition to the or, or actually I don't know if it was hidden in the debt compromise or if it was a brand I mean it was just like blatantly there for everybody to see and they voted for it anyway. Right there as part of the so-called debt compromise, they have created a new super congress that consists of what? 3 or 6? Six? 6. Each. 6. Yeah. 6 congressmen. The dirty dozen. <laughs> Uh, the, the, these uh, so we got six from the House and six from the Senate. Uh, I think they're all from Congress. They're I all from the House, and there's six Democrats and six Republicans. And lucky for us, there's six Republicans. So there's are twelve we, Republicans. No, right. yeah. Yeah, the, uh, are we so, going to debt? So these twelve people now are going to make up the rules basically for the rest of us because they have now been given the authority by that piece of legislation to pretty much pass anything that they want to. Yeah. Without yeah. the rest of Congress. Aren't yes. you glad? I mean, I mean, it's just so pesky having all these other people involved in the decision making. Very making. inefficient. Well, I mean, it's the whole thing of voting. I mean, why do we? I mean, what, the, well, the next, the next obvious step, the next obvious step is to just go ahead and suspend the elections. Yeah. There's absolutely no need well, for them. Well, except for the people that have their representatives in the super congress, they get to vote still. No, 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 no. See, because the people in the super congress, they, they really, they have all the people to worry about, not just the ones who, who put them in office. They, they've got all, and, and you know what, I do, I trust them. They've got all of our best interests at heart. They really do. 458 Tonka is the number. Gentlemen, ready to go to the phones? You know, the good thing about it is they're going to be out of business really soon. Oh, yeah, going out of business sale. I think they're going to sell Alaska. Oh, probably. 458 talk is the number. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? This is Al. Al, what's on your mind this morning? On, uh, what's on my mind uh, on that uh, super committee? I was under told and believed that uh, the only people that are going to be eligible to be selected for that are the ones that voted in favor of the increase, the debt increase. <laughs> that correct. is correct. Yeah, and I and I also predict that the the twelve that get picked won't be up for re-election. Yeah, I, right, right. So they'll just have carte blanche to. Uh, well, yeah, they yeah. won't be that way. Uh, anybody uh, won't be uh, accused or have to agree. It'll it'll take the. Uh, Accountability off the rest of the Congress. Yeah, whatever little is left. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, Al, you know, wouldn't it make sense though that the next step would logically be if you've got these 12 people in charge and to make sure that they're not up for re-election, just go ahead and make them permanent. Yeah, and get rid of the rest. Yeah. Because well, yeah, we there, there's well. no need for it. Yeah. Like, yeah like the, the Supreme Congress, kind of like the Supreme Court. Yeah. yeah. The Supreme Council of the United States has ruled that you are a heretic and must be burned. They're a Jedi Council they for the are. Emperor. Yeah. Oh, All righty, thank you. Thanks for the thanks call, Al. <laughs> thanks for getting that. It might that. not be a bad idea to only have 12 instead of 400 and some of them because, I mean, look at, we only have nine borough assembly members. You can see how well things are going here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's better than it's ever been. Smaller is better. In fact, you know what? We might as well do away with the rest of the eight and just have one borough account. Uh, borough. Oh, I thought that 
I thought that was Hopkins. Well, that's what I'm saying. Oh. Just get rid of the rest and just have and let the let the supreme leader tell us how it's going to be for the borough because and then that that'll get rid of all those pesky you know borough meetings and and have all that wasted time of people coming down and you wouldn't have to show up at the borough meetings anymore because you wouldn't even have them anymore. That'd be sweet. Wouldn't that be awesome? Actually, it'd be better if we just locked the doors, and then I wouldn't have to go down. You know, no, what would be better is to get all the troublemakers, like you, or the people that have been uh, causing problems for the Bureau Assembly, get them in there, and then lock the doors, and then burn it down with you inside. But they're a movie. Uh, and yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. I, obviously, I, we, we interject a, a bit of humor and a bit of uh, over the top and it's some tongue in cheek. I don't so. like giving them ideas like that. No, Sarcastic Saturday. It is. It is. It is. It's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> and on, and what, 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 what's uh, Monday going to be? Uh, uh, Mor- uh, Moron Monday? We need Monday a money Monday, I think. Money? Money Monday? We need a monkey Monday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Baron's on his monkey Monday. <laughs> Only if it's a godless monkey Monday. That's right. Uh, speaking of godless monkeys, where is Aaron anyway? Is I don't know. Anyone? Anyone? All right. <laughs> Four, five, eight, dog is the number if you'd like to get involved in the conversation. Uh, can we shift here just for a second on uh, and talk more about some local issues here? Dave, you have in, in front of you uh, a story about something that was going on down there in Anchorage. Yeah, so this guy, uh, there's a homeless guy protesting the mayor in Anchorage. And, of course, it's a good conservative mayor, Dan Sullivan, of course. And so this homeless guy has been sitting in front of the uh, the town hall down there. In protest of you know these different policies of, that the mayors had about homeless people, and so they the mayor put forth a uh, ordinance that would make it illegal to sit on the sidewalk. Um, that makes and, sense. And of course, this is proposed for public safety issues, but obviously the broader repercussion is you can effectively ban uh, uh, you know civil disobedience through this, right? Now it's illegal to be on the sidewalk doing something we don't want you to do. Get off public property. You know, go find a hole to crawl in and die. Sitting in and lying down are ways to make a stand. Mm, I guess that's out the window. Wait, wait, wait. That sounds like a song. Like, that's uh, a good song. I Peter, Paul, to that all day. Peter Paul and Mary, right? Have you been to jail for justice? Yeah, that's it. You know, here's the thing, though. If they if they can do that, and, and I do want to point out for anyone that's just joining the conversation that the Anchorage Assembly did table it, mm-hmm. which means that it is effectively dead. However, uh, it hasn't been voted on. And in order to completely kill it, it has to be voted on and voted down. So it could come back with the right makeup of the assembly to give that to give this mayor or any other future mayor the power to basically do that to make something illegal because th- there's one person protesting that they don't like what he has to say. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I I get it. Like you you hope that they're just motivated, like they say here, by public safety issues. But in the back of your mind, it's really hard to actually believe that. And the fact that they don't see you know, if they don't see that they're basically banning, you know, the only peaceful way we have of, of actually protesting, I mean, it's, that's absurd. I mean, I mean, I mean, what's, I, what's next? You know, you can't, uh, if you, you can't sit or lay on the sidewalk and protest. You know, maybe you can't come down to the assembly and give testimony that disagrees with the status quo. Or, or you can't disagree with the status quo. I cannot believe I, I forgot to print this story for you, but there was a story that comes out of, I, I think it's, uh, it's back east somewhere. Maybe we can Google it here. Uh, about a fellow who did some drawings and published them on the internet that were critical of the local police. I think it was Philadelphia. Hmm. Drawings that they are now investigating him for hate crimes, for making drawings that were critical of the police. They yep. let sink in for just a minute. If it is a crime to criticize the police or to criticize anyone, or to protest somebody in power, then what what recourse do we have? Yeah, we can go vote in the rigged elections. There you go. 